Cindy and Sally are to be applauded. They've been able to put on the program this morning, and I know you appreciate it. I do. I do <coughs> most of the time, I don't act like that I do, but uh, the children had young people. I tell you, some of the young ladies and young men growing up, yeah. and uh, I have to. Uh, Ma uh, Molly, <laughs> it's the first time she's been out of the mountain, so she's waving at me for it. But uh, uh, these young people are growing up uh, to where that uh, Steve, Billy, some of you that used to be in these uh, Christmas program, uh, some of the most impressive moments in your life and memories are the time that Sally hollered at you that uh, you wasn't doing it right, you got to do it this way and that way. And uh, it stays with you all your life. But somebody cared to implant in you the hope and the meaning of Christmas. Mm -hmm. And now the term joy to the world is a proven psychological fact. And you can go over to Kern Medical Center. My oldest granddaughter was sat in here this morning. You can go over to 3B. They'll be loaded down over these holidays. <laughs> there are more people that die during the holidays. There are more suicides that take place during the holidays. So it's a paradox. It, it, it's a joyful time for most people, but not for everyone. And sometimes we forget the suffering humanity that we have on the face of the earth. I got received a call this week from a very prominent Kern County businessman. <coughs> And he told me, he said, Reverend said, I'd like to come over and talk to you. I have got to talk to you. He said, I have ran out of hope. My life is absolutely collapsing. I have just left my psychiatrist and I've gone through all of this and I've got to have somebody to talk to. He came to my office and Sat there for an hour and a half. And with tears in his high eyes and a crushed heart, said, I don't know how that I'm going to make it through these holiday seasons with all of the problems that I've got. See, we in America have forgotten that what is on the outside cannot replace what we need on the inside. Amen. That the things that we can hold in our hands are not as near as important as the things that we have in our heart. We talk for an hour and a half, and I listen, believe it or not, that's what a counselor, a psychologist is supposed to do, is listen. And he said, what can I do? And I said, real simple, accept the gift that God gave to mankind. We went through several scriptures, and he has a background in another religion. We went through several scriptures. And he said, you mean to tell me it is that simple? And I said, it's so simple, it's complex. Salvation is simple, though a wayfaring man shall not err therein. We are what we believe. And if we believe, then we can experience the gift of God. I want you to turn with me this morning to 1 John, the 4th chapter and the 15th verse. 1 John, the 4th chapter <clears throat> and the 15th verse. When you're dealing with suffering, broken people, not broke in the stock market, not broke at the bank account, not broke in the neighborhood that they live in, not broke in the social status that they have achieved, but broken in heart, broken in mind, broken in will. There's no other time in all of the year that is more sensitive than the time that we are going to right now. Even the people that have things to rejoice in, it's still a very sensitive time. Because we get too busy, too wrapped up in 
and everything that's not really important. And we seem to forget the things that are important. And we have seen and do testify. John is writing this statement. We have seen it with our physical eyes. And we do testify. They are the witnesses that God called. Witnesses that were with him, that walked with him, that understood him, that experienced uh, his life in his presence. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. There are three things that we need to understand and to know about Christmas. The birth of Christ that Nathan so eloquently read, recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, and we need not perish. The old hymns that they used to sing, they don't sing anymore. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, the hurting, the suffering. You can't put something in your hands that is going to replace the hurt in your heart. The only thing that can do that is the spirit, the word, the birth of Christ. Jesus came as the word of God. God speaking to man. God speaking to his creation. In the beginning was the word, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. 